A few months back, we did a brutally honest review of the Inheritance game, so it's only right that we do a brutally honest review of the Hawthorne Legacy. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Amber Elise. I am obsessed with talking about books and mangas. If you are as well, then welcome. You have found your new YouTube home. Today, we have a book review on The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the sequel to The Inheritance Games, which is a pretty popular book and The Hawthorne Legacy has become just as popular. It came out in 2021 and it is a young adult mystery contemporary book. But before we get into the luxurious life of The Hawthorne Family and Avery Green, I do want to talk about a luxury jewelry brand that is our sponsor today and that is Ana Luisa. All the jewelry that I am wearing today is from Ana Luisa and I am so in love with each piece. So when they reached out to me I was super excited because I've heard of Ana Luisa before and what I love is that all the materials that they use contain recycled metals and it's all ethically sourced. Also the jewelry is handcrafted in the U.S. and France and they do their best to provide fair prices while also making sure they respect the environment. And this is a perfect time to snag you a piece of Ana Luisa jewelry because they're doing a mom's day sale so you can get something for you and your beautiful mother. They're doing buy one get one 40% off and trust me you have a lot of great options. So like I said the three pieces of jewelry that I am wearing right now are all from Ana Luisa. So the earrings that I have on they're kind of dangly and they have like a hoop right here. They're called the cruise earrings and I find them to be so cute and a nice little little statement when you have on a simple outfit such as this. And then we have my Marnie oval necklace and this is so cute and delicate and dainty. It's an excellent everyday necklace. There's a little opal in the center of it. And the necklace that I layered it with is the Hannah necklace. And this is pretty cool because this was designed by another booktuber, Hannah. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of her, but she designed this it is so cute there's a little flower on the inside and it looks great with this necklace so if you are a jewelry girl I highly recommend checking out Ana Luisa I would not recommend anything to you all that I do not 100% support I will have my personal Ana Luisa link in the description box so feel free to click on that check out the jewelry I strongly believe that you will not be disappointed all right let's get into this review just a reminder I will have a spoiler free discussion and then of course we will get into the spoilers also if you have not read The Inheritance Game. Some spoilers from that book may trickle into this review so I recommend you reading that book first before listening to this review. Let's get started. So Avery Graham is back. We know that she inherited a billion dollar fortune from Tobias Hawthorne and in this book we're still trying to figure out why. Why he left her all this money. Previously Avery and the Hawthorne boys dealt with all the riddles and clues that Tobias left but this time they have a little bit more of a lead because of Harry. Harry was a man that Avery Avery thought was homeless and she used to play chess with but we learned that he may actually be a Hawthorne and hold a lot of clues to why she inherited this fortune. And even though there's a DNA test that proves that Avery is not a Hawthorne, we get a lot of information and clues that show that her connection is a lot deeper to the family than we could have ever imagined. And as Avery and the Hawthorne brothers get deeper into this mystery, she's pulled in all sorts of directions by the brothers. And on top of that, she doesn't know who she can trust because there are so many people who not only want her fortune but want her gone. So I am surprised and happy to say that I enjoyed the Hawthorne legacy so much more than the Inheritance Games. This may be an unpopular opinion but I thought this story was so much stronger on so many levels. This this is what I wanted out of the Inheritance Games. It got a little convoluted as time went on, which I'll talk about, but overall, so much stronger. I felt like this flowed so well. Our puzzles and our riddles actually seemed like puzzles and riddles because I didn't know what was going on in the other book. But this one, this gave me that. I felt like I was in a game and I felt like I was seeing what Tobias's vision was and all his mayhem that he was causing. So the Hawthorne Legacy gets a lot more points from me because I see the growth. I see the growth in this book. While I did like this book a lot better than the Inheritance Games, there were a few cons. In this book, we had a lot of development. I love where we were going and we kept going and we kept going and we went, we went a little too long, okay? By the end, I was like, who are, where are you, what? There were so many twists and turns and yelps and whelps that it just got to be a bit unrealistic after a while. Not even unrealistic, just like why? Why are, why are we doing all this? But we definitely could have taken out a few of the twists that we had in here. Speaking of the twists, that's another con. A few of the things were predictable in this book. I don't know if it's a big con, but some of it I was just like, I can, I can see this coming. Another con, Avery has this friend named Max and Max, 
Max drove me a little nuts. I liked Max. She was in the story more, but she doesn't curse, so she uses all the supplement words, and I don't like it. That's not a huge deal, but it was definitely something that irked me a little bit. And the love triangle between Jameson, Grayson, and Avery, I just don't get it. I don't, I, I it, I don't vibe with it. I know a lot of people seem to like it. I just, I don't get it. I don't know. But I did like Jameson a lot more in this book, so. But those are my cons. That's it. For the pros in this book, I really liked Avery. I really liked Avery in this story. I felt like she got more of that oomph back in this story. She still had a few flaws, but I felt like she had a lot of growth. Really love that we got more backstory on Avery's side of the family. We learned a ton a ton of information in this book. And I really liked that we got to learn more about her mom and we got to see more people from Avery's past. That was great. I love that we really got to see how flawed and a lot of times messed up the Hawthorne family was in this book. There is a lot of drama that that family went through that we learn about in this story and it gets intense. I really like Jameson's development in this book. I felt like we got to see a side of him that I wasn't expecting. But like I said earlier, the riddles were in here, the games were in here, the mystery was in here. That's what I was seeking and longing for. Every few chapters there was an awesome twist and turn and like I said it got a little bit much at the end but it made the story so much more intriguing. But those are my pros. So my rating for this book, I want to say between a 3.5 and a 4. You know what, I'm going to give it a 4 because I do see the development in this book. So 4 out of 5 stars. Alright, that concludes my spoiler free discussion of the Hawthorne Legacy. See, as I've already stated, I truly enjoyed this book. If you plan on reading this, let me know. And if you have already read it, let's go talk about the spoilers. Hello, spoiler time. I guess to start off, the biggest kind of climax we left off on in the Inheritance Games was figuring out or trying to figure out if Toby was alive. Toby was a Hawthorne. He was Tobias's son. We all thought he was dead, but he was apparently alive. And then we are confirmed in this book that he is alive. But man, the connection that he has to all these different people is pretty insane. From Avery to Avery's mom to the Laughlins, he's connected to everybody. And his life is pretty sad. He found out he was adopted. He was angry with his dad. He got into drugs because of it that he wanted to get his dad back. He tries to burn down the house but ends up accidentally killing three people and then he lives off into the Nowhereville. For Avery, I was pretty sad because we were led to believe that Toby was going to be her dad. Her mom kept saying she had a secret. The fact that Tobias left her the fortune and we knew that he knew that Toby was still alive. And then we found out that her mom was actually in love with Toby. It's like, yes, that's her dad. Ricky is not her dad who we don't really care for. So we do all these riddles and puzzles and putting ourselves in danger just to find out that he is not her dad. But it was still so unbelievably touching when he told her that she was still his daughter in his eyes. But we find out that not only is he not Avery's dad, but that he is Melly's sister's dad, Melly and Eli's sister's dad, which that's the part to me when I was like, okay, we're doing entirely too much right now. Why is this a plot? Why? So the Hawthorne brothers, the, the grandsons, we learn about two of their dads. Grayson's dad was a true enemy because I was not expecting that at all. Granted, I understand that his nephew was killed because of Toby. I mean, the nephew also had his own liability because he was a part of trying to start the fire on the property, but he was trying to lure Toby and so he could kill him. Tobias, he did a lot of shady stuff. It was to protect his family. So, you know, but I don't know. The boys, Jameson, Grayson, Nash, and Xander. I liked them in this book overall. I wish Grayson's character was not so much of what he is because I really like him, but he's very standoffish and I get it. And then it didn't help that his dad just completely wanted nothing to do with him when he found out who he was. That broke my heart because I actually really do love Grayson. But out of the brothers, I kind of said this earlier, Jameson had the best character development. In reality, he's the one who lost his inheritance and she got it, but he really does care about her. Are they in love? I don't know, but they have a really great relationship. I do really like how Avery at the end was like, I'm done being controlled by Tobias, by the media. I'm done. 
I am about to boss up and be the heiress. And so I think this next book, we're gonna see her take a lot more of a lead and, and charge in her own life. This was a this was a whirlwind of a situation and an adventure, but I'm here for it and I enjoyed it. And I can't wait for the third book. I'm ready, I'm excited. All right, that concludes my spoiler discussion of the Hawthorne legacy. If you read this book, I really want to know, do you think it's better than the Inheritance Games or did you think the Inheritance Games was better? I want to hear your opinions on that because I, I fully find this one to be better for a multitude of reasons, but I would love to hear your thoughts on it. This video has come to an end, but of course I will see you all in my next video. Until we meet again, go read.